Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have the October premium authentic book box that was sent to me for review. Now this was actually the final book that we selected for our quarterly book club that we run over in the Nobot Nook. That is the private Facebook group that is associated with this channel and within it we run what we call the book nook and we select a book every quarter to read together and it is always a book that is connected to a subscription box, something that ties it to the channel. And for the past couple of years we have been using authentic books because it is nice because they have three different options every single month. We just do one quarter because we feel like that's a little bit of an easier cadence for people to be able to participate in. But as many of you know, Authentic Books has had all kinds of delays. Some of it is because of the publisher. Some of it is because of damaged items. Some of it is just because they have been uh, growing as a small business, moving into a brick and mortar store. And I hope, I have my fingers crossed, that they are getting caught up because they were selected for this year's book book club selections as well. So we are currently taking votes over in the Nobot Nook for our first book club read of 2024. It will be the February box, so really we'll probably be receiving that towards the end of February, beginning of March, and doing our reading in the month of March. And then hopefully we'll get back on our regular quarterly schedule. But if you are interested in joining us, definitely check it out over there. Our book queen Priscilla is amazing at managing our book club. She gives us discussion questions. She breaks up the reading so whether or not you are receiving the box you can definitely follow along whether you have an audio version or another copy of the book that we have voted on and selected and if you're kind of curious about how we do it we also do a live discussion when we are wrapping everything up. So we'll actually have our live discussion of this book and box tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, and there will be a link for you over in the community tab. It's just kind of fun to see how it works. Of course, everybody can be there in the chat. And even if you haven't read the book, I encourage you, if you're just thinking about joining our book club maybe, or joining the Nobot Nook, definitely check that out. We'd be happy to have you uh, join in that discussion. So just some details about Authentic Books in case you are not familiar. It is a monthly book subscription. It is beautifully done. She always gets all kinds of new releases and there are always three different genres to choose from. Sometimes it's contemporary fiction. Sometimes you will get uh, thrillers or mysteries and often there is a romance offering as well. There are basically two different sizes now. So they're all built around the idea of having a full sensory experience. Of course, the book is the sense of sight. All of the boxes include a candle that is made in-house over at Authentic Books that is for the sense of smell. There's a Spotify playlist that goes along with. There are recipes for uh, food as well as cocktails, and you have the option of getting um, tea, coffee, or a cocktail mixer in your box as well, depending on the size. And there's all kinds of fun enhancers as well in terms of beautiful bookmarks and sometimes some signed book plates, uh, all kinds of things to really enhance the experience. So it starts at $56.99, uh, $5 in shipping. For those of you who haven't seen that shipping change, it's probably because you're an existing subscriber. But if you are a new subscriber, that is what you'll see reflected for the most part uh, when you do first sign up. So you will get that full box, uh, $5 in shipping, and that will include, again, the book, the candle, the coffee, tea or cocktail option two touch items or lifestyle items, and then all of those enhancers that I was talking about. Then the next level up is uh, $66.99 plus $5 in shipping. You get all of the stuff that is gonna be in that full experience box, but then you also get an extra touch item, so for a total of three touch items instead of just the two. And then in addition to the taste item of coffee, tea, or cocktail, you also get a delicious premium chocolate. So I always think that is a great deal as well. If you are interested in subscribing, you can use the code NOEL10 that will save you 10%. As always, I will leave all of that information for you in the description box below. We do have special codes for our Nobots who are participating in the book club, so if you are interested, definitely make sure that you're in the Nobot Nook and you check out all of the posts about that to find out. All right, so the book that we selected was more of a contemporary fiction, but it did have a little bit of a thriller mystery element to it. It was called The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok, and we did get a nice um, hardcover. I love, I love the hardcovers. 
And of course, we got our beautiful bookmark, which is fantastic. This is one of the enhancers. Here is a quote from the book. It says, I was a leftover woman. After everyone else had carved away what they wanted to see in me and had taken what they desired, I was all that was left. So I love this little detail. Here is our book playlist. Sometimes it appears in the guide that comes along with, uh, which is this, which matches. And sometimes it is going to be on that separate little card. We also did receive in this box, if you were a subscriber and you were waiting on your box, it was about three months late in all honesty, we did get a nice $10 gift card which I thought was nice as well as an uh, update. And just as a reminder, 5% of your membership is donated to the Adopt a Classroom Foundation, so there is a give back element to this box as well. Inside they write down everything about all of the different items. I will say that one thing that I noticed, um, and they used to do page numbers for the inspiration and now they don't do that anymore. I think just to save time, but I'm always on the lookout for what items were inspired by what quotes and pages in the book. Um, but it does tell you what was in the mini full and premium and they are still saying that there is a mini box version but I haven't been able to replicate that on the new website and the new way that you customize your box. So if any of you have figured it out where you would just get one touch item for example, let me know, but for the most part, I think it is just the full box and premium box options now. It could have been that this was just this case still with the October box and it is no longer. So here's our book cocktail and our uh, food recipe as well. I'm going to try to make one or the other or both of those for our book club uh, discussion tonight. We have our Meet the Makers. I will say that there was a note about this Meet the Makers. It was De Cranes, which is a chocolate maker. And I thought it was kind of cool because it looks like uh, she is a, a Japanese heritage uh, inspired chocolate maker, which would have made a little bit of sense even though the characters in this novel are more Chinese. Um, but just to have that Asian flavor uh, and flair, but we actually wound up with a chocolate from Compartes Chocolate. So I didn't actually see anything from this particular maker. So maybe they appeared in one of the other boxes for this particular month, but I thought that was kind of interesting, right? So we also get codes from the different makers that are featured in the box, but let me go ahead and move along. And again, if you feel like I'm kind of rushing, I'll talk a little bit more, maybe read some more passages from the book in our discussion tonight. It gives me a little bit more room, but let me go ahead and read the uh, blurb on the inside. Jasmine Yang arrives in New York City from her rural Chinese village without money or family support, fleeing a controlling husband on a desperate search for the daughter who was taken from her at birth, another female casualty of China's controversial one-child policy. But with her husband on her trail, the clock is ticking and she's forced to make increasingly risky decisions if she ever hopes to be reunited with her daughter. Meanwhile, publishing executive Rebecca Whitney seems to have it all, a prestigious family name and the wealth that comes with it, a high-powered career, a beautiful home, a handsome husband, and an adopted Chinese daughter she adores. She's even hired a nanny to help her balance the demands of being a working wife and mother. When an industry scandal threatens to jeopardize not only Rebecca's job but her marriage, this perfect world begins to crumble and her role in her own family is called into question. The leftover woman finds these two unforgettable women on a shocking collision course, twisting, suspenseful, and surprisingly poignant this a profound exploration of identity and belonging, motherhood and family. It's a story of two women in a divided city, separated by severe economic and cultural differences, yet bound by a deep emotional connection to a child. So I had a lot of uh, moments where I felt some affinity to it. I used to want to be an editor for a publishing company. I have attended some of the schools that are mentioned in this book. I am an adopted Asian. So there are a lot of ideas about identity in here that I was definitely interested in that I could relate to. Um, but some of it seemed a, a, to me a little bit heavy-handed almost, um, but it was did have that kind of fun meta uh, quality to it in terms of talking about writing, talking about editing, talking about publishing, and all being within a book. So definitely a lot of knowledge reflected in it. But let's talk about the items that we got. And uh, if I have any time, I will definitely read a passage or two for you. So we did get our hand poured soy candle. You can see that there's a little bit of like leakage, a little bit of sweating. And that has been the case with the last couple of boxes that I've gotten. And it's not even really hot. So I don't know what that issue is, but it definitely seems like like when it sits there for a while, that's what happens. So the scent is called Like a Mother, and it, the scents are neroli and white jasmine, and of course.
course they've created a label to really match the cover with that beautiful sort of teal and white flowers of course which are you know she considers them a little bit gauche because in Chinese culture the white flowers are I think more of like mourning right so they're not something you would usually decorate your uh, house with but it is a lovely candle. It is very much jasmine, and that is one of my favorite scents. And of course, the nod there is that one of the main characters, the one, the immigrant who has come looking for her daughter, her name is Jasmine. So that is a good connection right there. And it was an author collaborated box. So sometimes I think the author gets a little say in the scents that are gonna be in the um, candle. I'm not sure that it often extends past the candle scents and the other items. It would be awesome if it did, or if we got a little author's note which we have gotten a couple times I think but not too often now for taste number one which would be in the full and premium it would not be in the mini boxes again I don't think you can actually purchase a mini box anymore with the current way that you customize you would have gotten the cocktail syrup uh, yuzu syrup a uh, coffee from Sunday mornings or a tea and it was called us to tea so I always go for the cocktail mix because I think it's fun that she includes a cocktail recipe this is from Portland syrups we've gotten things from Portland syrups before it is a yuzu flavored syrup which I think sounds really delicious that light citrusy uh, flavor and they have a cocktail for us called a yuzu a margarita so I'm gonna have to get some Cointreau lime and I don't even have any tequila left in my house I usually have tequila and vodka are usually my um, spirits of choice the scallion pancakes it sounds like a little bit time intensive and I know that our book Queen Priscilla has already given a shot so I might just get some scallion pancakes from Trader Joe's just to have a little snack to nosh on but it sounds like the sauce the dipping sauce that goes along with is really where it's at so I don't remember seeing uh, anything about yuzu or scallion pancakes necessarily but definitely has those sort of Asian flavors um, but I don't remember any particular passages that seemed very important to me now for taste number two which again is the chocolate in the premium boxes we got our compartes chocolate this is a creme brulee I don't remember a creme brulee here either but maybe they had it at a fancy um, lunch maybe they might have had it at the fancy lunch that when she was trying to sort of woo an author to let her be an editor and that was kind of an interesting scene for sure um so again i think it was probably supposed to be a chocolate from de crains but uh we did not get that but i always love the uh chocolates from compartes chocolate they have really beautiful um packaging as well as delicious flavors and it looks like it's got that nice creme brulee crunch to it that uh it was what makes creme brulee so fun for most people all right so touch number one that would be in mini full and premium or full and premium we actually got a just a chapter tote bag from authentic books so they are making some of their items in house now um i know that that is a way to save money generally it's not like my favorite kind of thing but if they keep the branding to a minimum which they have with just a little authentic books logo there i think that's fine it says this is just a chapter not the whole story so that is a great thing but usually as readers are always like just one more chapter in fact I found myself I just finished this book because I didn't want too many spoilers early on by following the discussions over in the Nobot Nook I just finished it this weekend just the other day and I kept telling my husband um you know I I just need one more chapter and I was like they're really short chapters they're only like five pages so he was like all right one more chapter but I did get sucked into it because it's told in multiple viewpoints different time frames uh, there's a lot of good stories there's a lot of things you're hoping get summed up it had kind of a quick ending things kind of like wrapped up really really fast in the third section some of it seemed a little bit too neat but um, I felt like it was a pretty satisfying res resolution it says our team brought you a tote bag inspired by the themes of this book no matter what life throws at you it's only temporary and your story is still being written so yes as an immigrant jasmine is very very much uh someone who is willing to work hard to get what she wants she also has to prioritize you know knowing that uh being with her child uh who was taken away from her that she found out about later is the most important thing not necessarily her love and even she has to sacrifice i think some of her her standards and morals and where do you make that where do you draw that line right 
Touch number two. This is nice because usually this would be something that was just in all of the mini boxes or the standard boxes, the sheet masks, because it's kind of a sort of lower valued item, but this was actually considered touch number two. This is from Lapcos. It is the Escargo Daily Sheet Mask, formulated with anti-inflammatory and antioxidant-rich snail extract. The super ingredient helps strengthen the skin barrier and makes it less susceptible to environmental factors. I was kind of surprised that we went with this instead of more of like, even though, again, the characters in this are Chinese like that we didn't do like K-Beauty or some other sort of Asian skincare line I don't remember anything about like sheet mask or, or like snail say snail ingredients but if you guys remember in, in, in any of the passages let me know and then our final item and I do kind of like that it's um, we have a more variety in the touch items they can be like lifestyle items from a variety of categories we got some Mimoi bamboo rayon blend socks so these are just novelty socks you guys know I am not a big sock person but of course it is because uh, this takes place in the New York publishing world and she's like down in uh, New New York Chinatown all the way up to Columbia um, on the Upper West Side so there's like a lot of love for the city and I think that comes from the fact that the author also part-time lives in New York City it says these socks feature New York themed illustrations scattered about it making this a fun and festive sock they're even made with rayon from bamboo so maybe the bamboo is like a little Asian nod here that's eco-friendly and gets softer with every wash and again this would only be in the premium boxes this is something I'll probably pass on just because I I don't usually wear like dress socks like this but um, I do have an affinity for New York like I said I've gone to a lot of the places mentioned in this book and so I thought that was kind of a cute nod and that one at least was a little bit more of an obvious allusion oh I forgot to show you guys we did get a signed book plate which I always think that is a really nice touch because she does Natisha the owner of authentic books does really work with the authors and the publishers so I thought I could maybe find you a passage that has a little bit of that um, love letter to New York um, or the beautiful country, which is how Jasmine refers to the U.S. So let's see if I can find what page I marked that on. So sometimes when I don't have a lot of time, I will actually listen to the audiobook. But for this, because it was a book club selection, I did really want to take the time to uh, read it in hard copy and it was really short it was only it was a little under 300 pages so we were able to do it in three weeks instead of sometimes we'll break it up into four so it says um, so Jasmine is going to meet her friend Anthony who she is strangely run back into in the US even though they hadn't seen each other for about 10 years this is actually told um, about 15 years before the opening uh, uh, chapter so this is probably in like 2007 ish it took me a while to puzzle out the subways and I missed the stop, which meant I had to double back. I was late. I tried to text him but had no reception underground and once I emerged onto the quiet, tree-lined streets paved in cobblestones, I was so surprised that I forgot. What a strangely quaint place in this impervious city. I walked down a ramp, the trees beginning to bud above my head, each step bringing me closer to the breathtaking view of the lower Manhattan skyline, as glorious as a celestial sunrise. It was as if I were entering some magical liminal pocket of time from which no one emerged unchanged. This, this is the beautiful country. This was the dream that had lured so many hapless immigrants to this place. The endless sky filled with soft white clouds, the pristine skyscrapers glinting in the brilliant sunlight, fairies daring to cross the rippling waves. This land of power and possibility, heartbreak, and ecstasy. So I thought that was just a beautiful passage. Um, her kind of remembering this, you know, she has this hard scrabble life. She's actually working in a strip club as a cocktail waitress. And she has this experience where she's like, this, this beautiful pocket, this moment, this is what people came for. There is a little bit more uh, hope in all of the effort that she's putting into everything. So I thought that was a nice passage. I thought the writing was nice. I thought it was well crafted again with the different points of view and kind of keeping some things a mystery. Um, I didn't figure out a lot of it until the very end. There was, like I said, just a couple of moments where I felt like some of the messages some of the themes might have been a little bit heavy-handed but maybe that's just to make sure that everybody actually gets the point and that was actually something that um, Rebecca, Rebecca actually mentions to her 
p potential author is she's like, I know these themes are there, but maybe you need to make them even clearer just so that people really get what you're saying and they don't think that you're actually just uh, perpetuating these these stereotypes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you want to join us for our discussion a little bit later today, I would love to see you there. And if you have any comments, you can leave them on that video or on this one. Um, but I get overall, I think that this is a really good value in terms of a box that gets you into reading, that gets you new reads. I mean, the value of a hardcover of a recent release, I mean, it's $30. The MSRP is right there on the book. So then you add about $30 to $40 depending on the box size and you get all of these extras uh, as well as a reading community which is a fantastic fantastic thing to uh, fuel your reading in the new year. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did please help me out with a thumbs up and I will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing. Maybe I will see you in the live stream with Priscilla and all of you in the chat uh, in just a couple of hours.